Today's topic is going to be clustering and we'll see how many classes this takes. I'm hoping to take no more than uh, uh, one class, maybe uh, half, maybe a half, half a class more in addition to today's lecture. So apart from classification, clustering is the other major machine learning topic uh, that we are going to discuss in this course. So the coverage is going to be divided in the following way. Uh, we are first going to see what clustering is and even though clustering is a more general problem, we are specifically going to look at applications of clustering to documents, to text documents in particular. So that's going to be our focus. We'll see why clustering is used, where exactly clustering is used, what are the applications of, 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 of document clustering. So we'll look at the motivation for clustering of documents. We'll see how documents are represented. This is something we've already seen before. We have looked at the vector space model for representing documents. So we had a vector of TF-IDF weights representing each document in chapters 6 and 7 and we are more or less going to continue with that representation. The third thing that uh, we need to talk about when talking about clustering is how do we evaluate the performance of a clustering algorithm. So how do we know that we have a good uh, collection of clusters? So that's something we have to discuss. But of course, before we discuss performance evaluation, we have to look at what the algorithms themselves are. Right? So after looking at uh, what clustering is and why we, uh, why we do document clustering, and after looking at how documents are represented, we will look at a couple of different kinds of clustering algorithms. And then we'll see at the end how we can evaluate the performance of clustering algorithms. So that's the overall structure of uh, this lecture. I'm seeing a circle here. Are you able to hear me? Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. We are able to hear you, sir. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing a circle here. So uh, in case you lose your connection, you can just ping me over Skype because usually this happens when the connection is lost. So if you are still able to hear me, we can uh, go ahead. So b by the way, these slides are available on the website of the CS276 course at Stanford. So if you go down and uh, look at uh, this particular lecture corresponding to chapter 16 in the book, you can download the PowerPoint slides from there. So I'm pretty much using uh, the slides that they have for this lecture. So what is clustering? Let's start by defining what clustering is. As the name indicates, clustering refers to the process of grouping together a set of d objects, in our case a set of documents, into a collection of clusters or classes of similar objects. So one simple example that uh, you can think of is the way in which books in the library are arranged. Okay, so they are grouped into different subject areas and you can think of each shelf or each uh, label on different shelves of the library as labeling different clusters of documents. So you can actually have a hierarchy of uh, clusters. For example, all books related to science could be in one section of the library. All books related to uh, social science could be in a different section of the library. And then within the science section, you could have you know, separate aisles for books on biology, books on chemistry, books on geology, and so on. So that's how we want to cluster documents. We want to cluster documents based on 
uh, their content and the intuitive idea of a cluster is that documents that are within the same cluster are sufficiently similar to one another and documents that belong to different clusters are sufficiently dissimilar from each other okay, so that's that's what uh, the notion of a cluster means points that are within the cluster are similar to or close to one another and points that are that belong to different clusters are far away from one another. Now clustering algorithms are a form of unsupervised learning in contrast to the supervised learning algorithms in machine learning that we saw in a previous class. So in supervised learning we had a training phase where we had a set of predefined classes and we were shown we were shown a set of documents that were labeled with the class to which they belonged so that was the training data a set of labeled examples of documents belonging to each class and our computer learned how to build a model for documents belonging to different classes it learned a model a probabilistic model and using that model in the test phase when a new document came up the machine was able to evaluate the probability that this new document is coming from each of the different predefined classes and the class for which that probability was maximum was the class to which we assigned that new test document so that was supervised learning in unsupervised learning there is no training phase okay so as opposed to supervised learning where we have a training phase we don't have any training phase in unsupervised learning algorithms we are directly given a huge amount of data and we have to discover clusters in that data without taking the help of any uh, training examples or labeled examples so clustering is a common and important task that is uh, found in many applications in web data mining. Are you still with me? Because I'm still seeing the uh, circle here. So can somebody just uh, confirm that you're able to hear me? Yes, sir, we're able to hear you, sir. Okay. So here's a data set where there is a clear cluster structure. So you can see just with your naked eye that there are three different clusters in this uh, uh, data set. So the question is how do we design an automated algorithm for finding the three clusters? Okay, using your naked eye you can obviously distinguish uh, these three different patterns. But how do we make a machine come up with these three clusters? So we will need to use the same intuition that we saw in the previous slide. The intuition is that documents that belong to the same cluster are going to be very similar to one another and documents that belong to different clusters are going to be dissimilar. So that's going to be the overall uh, intuition that we will use to end up with uh, different clusters and an assignment of document to each of those different clusters. So after that visual example uh, of what clustering involves along with that library example I gave you before, 